So one thing that I really don't like to do is uh, configuring charts. So there are actually many great chart libraries out there from any framework, but I think it's they require so much configuration effort to get it just right. So I'm always looking out for some really simple and easy to use uh, frameworks. And um, one thing I found was uh, charts.css. And uh, the cool thing about it is it's literally just a CSS style sheet. So there's no library. Um, you just apply some styles and you get um, something like this or this. So they're really simple looking, of course, here. Um, because yeah, it's only styles, but um, with no real effort, it's super maintainable to use. So I want to show you how it works. So first up installation, um, you can just uh, yeah reference the style sheet from CDN or I used NPM installed it and here I just imported it. So I have this page here and I have a load function that returns me some data we can use in, in a chart. And um, yeah, so the interesting thing here is we actually use tables that are styled. So um, everything, all the data, you just build a table with it and this then gets transformed to a chart. So first thing we can, or let's uh, start off with uh, the data. So we do t body, t body, and um, in there we're gonna use a loop. So um, for each of our data rows, so data I have a chart data attribute, and in there I have general sales. So I'm using a sample music store app. I always used in other tutorials. And here we have uh, sales and we just have a, like how much, what, what are the highest grossing genres we are selling. And so we use that and end the each. And in there we just do a table row, so that. And um, we do a table head. And that's the cool thing, it's actually accessible. So that's one thing you want to look out for is that your charts are also usable for, for, for people who are dependent on the screen reader, for example. And as the data is just tabular data represented in a table and only the styles make it a chart, it's really usable for people that are not able to see, that have no vision. That's really great. She didn't knew that you can do th in a t body. I only did it in the table head. And um, so we have a td and a span in there. The span um, can have the dollar value, so g dot sales total. And now the interesting pa uh, part is, so we, we this is now the the the. Uh, Thing here the table so it's not a chart yet so for what we can do to make it actually a chart is we can um, apply some classes so um, for the table here we have to add the class chart CSS and the type of the chart it's bar and you can already see something's going on here and um, so currently the bars are all full. This is of course wrong. And so how can we make the sizes or the width of the bars correlate to the uh, actual value? And they did a really, really, um, or the author of the framework did a really smart approach. We just use a CSS variable called size. And in there we can do use um, calc, which is a CSS function and we're gonna take um, our value, sales total, and then we have to um, divide it by the max. So if you have like percentage values, you will have, uh, you can just type in 100, as we don't know what the highest thing is, or we have normalized our, our data to a scale of 100, we need to, um, we need to get the max value. 
for that I'm gonna create a small helper function. So let's do it here. And it's basically we pass an array and accessor for the array to get the number value and we return the maximum value of that array and we have a variable here and actually make the const um, then get max and we get the max value in that array and so we can divide by that uh, yeah and so now you can actually see we already have our bars um, in the perfect width or the, the, the width of the bar now represent the value. And this is the magic of the framework basically. What we can also do is um, we add a caption here in the table. Doesn't show it yet so we have to add a class, show heading, sales total by genre. We also want labels, so we can do that uh, in table head. So we have genres and sales total. Um, that describes our data, good for accessibility. And uh, still doesn't show the labels. The labels are actually from here, but we have to add a class, show labels. Um, okay, we have that now. But you can see it's uh, kind of looking horrible because it's too short. Author has a, the, the framework author has a great solution for this too. Just a CSS variable, label size can just um, say 150 pixels. And um, actually we should also add a class data here. I don't know why, I think it doesn't change, but it's in the uh, demo code from the framework and one thing we can also do is uh, data spacing 5 great okay and um, so they now have a little bit of padding and you can see it's really really easy to to do that so let me quickly also paste for other things uh, the max values here and next chart we can do is, um, so we could go ahead, copy this whole thing as uh, the, the styles always look mostly the same, or the layout of the charts always looks the same as you have will, will always have a table. And um, so yeah, now we get the same, but let's do a different chart. So um, this time custom account by country. So let's also apply that here and um, we have to get this data and in the row you have to do um, country and here we have to do custom account and this is a uh, custom account max and here again custom account but it's not in dollars it's just in a number and we have our different chart and it's now for example if we want to say yeah this doesn't make sense to be um, a bar chart so let's maybe do a column chart and you can see just what one class changed everything looks different now that's the power of CSS labels are fine here but I think it's too narrow so let's um, instead uh, change the height. So we just change the style here and it looks better now. Okay, so these are the, the, the two chart types. Um, this really excels at a uh, bar or column as column is only a rotated bar chart. Um, they also do like area charts. Um, and uh, this is now a little bit more complicated, unfortunately. So I again copy everything here. And so here, say it's total by month. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna change that for now. Sales total by month. Um, and this time we have the month in here, we have the um, 
sales total. And um, so one thing here is uh, it's a little bit confusing. Um, like the month is not really the single data point. Like um, January has this amount of month uh, of value. It's more like a certain endpoint. So what's before January and what's after January. So we have to provide two values here. And um, first one is start. So where does the January, January value start at basically? And um, we just in here do okay from that array. I have to put in the iterator value um, from this. Uh, this uh, from the previous month, we get sales total value. Or if this is the first one, we start at zero and I also divide it by the sales per month. And the second one, the size. So I think this should be called end actually. It would be better than size, but uh, that's how it is. Uh, we do like the end value and this I just put it the current one. So the January value and um, yeah, we then have to say area and I remove that spacing and you can see how you can do an area chart. And um, yeah, there are, f I think, a, a few quirks. Um, um, so here, for example, this, this is behind the the chart, so it's not like that smart like JavaScript chart frameworks, which know better where to put like labels and stuff. Um, and also, it it looks kind of quite uh, kind of nice if, if the value span is okay, but if you have too many like months in here, so I can for example change the query here. I can say. I think I can just do bigger 2008. Uh, I can't do that because it's a by month. Um, okay, uh, I can limit 15, for example, here. You can see everything basically breaks apart. So, um, and as you can see also with the fix I did here with the label width. So um, the, the CSS thing, label size 150 pixels, that's something you have to do manually. And um, so if you do like, I think a minimum, minimal uh, kind of dashboard type, that would be a cool framework to use where you just one time set up anything. But if you have like generated um, data and you don't know what you get, like you can get maybe you want to have lots of lots of uh, labels, lots of groups of data, then this is maybe not working that well. Also, one thing that's kind of a bummer is these are actually the only types, bar, column, area and line. Line is basically area without the fill. And I think something like a pie chart that would be really useful or you need really want to use is not available. It says radial pi polar radar TBD 2023, but it's not very maintained. So the last commits were last year, May, and before that. 2021 so after i think 2020 it wasn't uh, developed further anymore so um i think it's a really cool cool way of thinking to do this so with with the, the idea of just building charts with css is i think really amazing and also good execution but um, unfortunately it um, th i think it has like limits 
and um, of course only four chart types where basically bar and column and even area and line are almost the same. I think it's not a viable option if you have to do any in-depth charts. Um, some features I haven't showed, you can also do like a legend. Um, Tooltips work really great. Um, yeah, stacked is a cool thing here. That also looks pretty neat and nice, I think. And uh, yeah, the, the axis uh, thingy here are also kind of interesting, I think. And also cool implementation. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope um, you find this interesting as, as I did. If you have any feedback or if you have now any chart frameworks that are really, really simple to use and don't need, that are basically plug and play. I don't want to mess around with huge configuration JavaScript objects. Then please comment below and I will take a look at it. Other than that, enjoy your day. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.